And here's some real tape from the space shuttle right here. This is special aluminum tape that from they... From your days at the space shuttle. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a tape freak. It's kind of a weird fetish. <laughs> I call it pod to pallet because, you know, it's really, it's really important to actually think about the experience all the way through. We make sure that the beans don't come from uh, areas that use child cellular labor. If we can take a good bean and make it really great by proper fermentation and drying. What we use the lab for is to identify beans, choose the beans, and that's when we start um, doing with tons and tons and tons of roasting tests. And then I do tons and tons and tons of, of uh, couverture or, or chocolate making out of that. So we use the lab to scale things. We're doing this really great uh, um, collaboration with uh, FXPAL where they're actually they're putting cameras in the labs and they're, they're monitoring all our, um, all our temperature sensors and so it all automatically goes in the database and I'll be able to turn things on from my house and from my iPhone. You're talking about all this high-end stuff with FXPAL and these sensor networks but and cameras but then I look around and I see things like a, a space heater that's kind of like the one that I have, you know, for 20 bucks that sits on my desk. It started off, this guy somewhere, I think in Toledo, I'm not quite sure, gets a Ronco turkey oven and put, makes this drum and, and modifies it. We, we take it from there, and so it turns into a coffee roaster. And so basically we just take that, we further, further modify it with uh, temperature control stuff, different lamps, um, and then different screens and all sorts of stuff. So we tweak it the Cho way. Ah, does that smell great? So that's about five kilos of beans. So what I'm doing right now is got this little cracker made, made from this guy in England. So from there, that, that's what it looks like. Look, just take a big sniff of that. Isn't that amazing? Is that crazy? Well, this is something we found this um, design on the internet, and we pretty much took it, modified it, and actually got a blower from Matt's shop there, and we got a shop back in the back, and vibrators we got from other stuff and it cost us about I think 12, 13 bucks to make. So what it does is uh, the weight of the, the shell, the lighter shells will get sucked out to a shop back outside. A shop back. Yeah, we we'll, yeah, we'll found it on the street. And so, uh, <laughs> and then uh, the shells hit, the, hit, hit, a, hit a tray at the bottom. There it goes. So coming out this side is uh, bean pieces and out here it's like, look at it, it's the shells, right? This is where we actually use um, uh, these really cool things from from India, they're basically for making doll, these conical uh, wet stone grinders. Isn't that cool? So actually it's got a conical shape so that when the bowl rotates, granite on granite, actually the particle sizes actually get nice and flat versus if it was a, if it was a cylinder, uh, it would have tearing forces on it. What I learned from the space shuttle was about having a bunch of sensors that don't, don't touch things. So I just know about infrared sensors and stuff like this. So it's an IR, uh, it's IR uh, uh, sensor hooked up to a $45 temperature controller, hooked up to a $40 fan that we got from the hardware store with some little, <laughs> and here's some dryer duct, and, and here's some real tape from the space shuttle right here. So this whole thing was put together for, you know, a couple grand, right? And so if you wanted to do this in scale on a, on a, in, a in a real lab, you know, just, just one um, uh, lab grinder is about twenty to $40,000. It's crazy. So, yeah, and it works. I'm going to get these things spinning. What I'm doing right here is I'm basically uh, we're moving it from the, the nib to liquor phase and now I'm going to start making chocolate out of it. All our raw materials have codes and then the people that actually work with it don't even know where it comes from. Okay, so you're encrypting yes. your ingredients. Of course. This is encrypted chocolate. You have to, right? I mean, this, we're, we're creating some of the world's best chocolate. you got to protect it, right? We start here primarily with cocoa mass, and then we actually melt it down. That's what this first tank does. We actually dump chocolate chunks in there, uh, liquor. We melt it down. So what happens is, in here, um, there's these blades that rub against these, these this whole lining on the inside, these D-shaped bars. And so in here, I finish it up to get it down to like 16 to 18 microns. You can see those spots on it. That's the uh, it's starting to crystallize. So, now, why is I didn't know chocolate crystal. Oh my God! This is one of my favorite things about chocolate. Since there is no water in chocolate, 
right? To how do you get the sugars to dissolve in it, right? You can't because there's no water. So you actually have to grind and refine the sugars down to this imperceptible mouth size for it to actually... Um, oh, right, to be a particle size. So you're, be... Exactly. So you're suspending the cocoa particles and the sugar particles in the cocoa butter. The chocolate starts forming this molten lattice mm -hmm. crystal structure, and if you do it just right, when you pour the molds, all those triglycerides start packing and then double packing and triple packing, and then you cool it down, and all of a sudden it's holding, 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 holding on, and then poof, it lets go of all that latent heat. It blows off that heat, and those crystals go poof, and they all line up like this lattice. That's what gives it its snaps. So when you snap a piece of chocolate, you're actually cleaving a crystal in half. Wow. It's just like a diamond. What happens is after you refine the chocolate, yeah. you've got to, they've got to live in these big tanks here. You want to kind of aerate the chocolate a little bit. You want to have it create these waterfalls with hot air blowing on top of it. Uh, oxygen in the air binds with the acidic acids. And it gets blown off. This is really important for flavor development. So what happens is after we conch it in anywhere up to 12 to 72 hours, depending on the flavors I'm trying to develop, we, pipe, we pump it all over to these tanks over here. What's really amazing about this, this system is um, it's all driven by one single motor, and that motor is seven horsepower, and it drives shafts and gears. That's it. You see these, um, these rails, seven bars, uh, seven molds get indexed in there at one time. Uh -huh. When it gets filled, the whole system index up, another seven goes in, index up, all the way up, and gets to the top, then squirts on over, and they index down. So what's happening in here, there's a big giant vortex of cold air. It chills it down, so it takes about by the time we deposit it, by the point it gets here, it takes about 45 minutes. Then chocolate comes out the, this other end, and then it goes into the wrapping machines. I'm trying to modernize the, uh, the factory, right? And so I'm trying to come up with ways to use advanced computer vision techniques and stuff to actually reduce the labor that I need to do stuff. This, this machine normally takes three people to run. I want to be able to do it with one person. And how we do that is we're putting cameras all over it. If you notice, everywhere there's cameras everywhere. Not only are we going to be able to punch up video from anywhere, because we have wireless tablets to be able to punch up video where stuff is, our friends at FX Pal are actually modeling the whole thing in 3D, and we're actually mapping real-time video on top of the 3D model, right? So we can actually rotate the whole factory around and get real-time video squirted onto the model. So I can be, again, be in Peru or whatever, and I can see real-time what's going on in the factory. In 3D in simulation. 3D. We're totally. not simulation, it's reality. Yeah, re exactly. So you're using NASA code yeah. to make chocolate. Of course. Doesn't everybody? I think I know what's really going on here, Timothy Childs. What's that? You are planning to make chocolate factories on Mars. Did you tell me?